join us at Women of Courage and celebrate the achievements of women. Good afternoon, and thank you for tuning in. This is Gloria Lee, the moderator for the show Women of Courage. Wherever you are in the world, I need you to know one thing right now. You are amazing. I know you might be upset. I know you might be hurting. And I know you might be frustrated. I know because all of these things happened to me. I was homeless for two years and all I had was a computer, my son, and a car. I want you to know you still have a purpose in life and it is my job to help you believe that again. Do you want to believe? Can you see that the divorce was not meant to take you out? Can you believe that the lost house and the lost job is a setup for something greater? By the end of this broadcast, you'll be injected with so much that you cannot help but believe again. And I am going to help you do just that. Are you ready? I got some things I want to share with you. And I will even make suggestions on books and activities that you can implement, which will ultimately bring healing and wholeness to you. If you are ready to be healed, if you're ready to be whole, just jot down the pointers I give and watch your life transform. No matter what happened, no matter whose fault it was, today is a new day and your time to live and be free is now. Join me in this journey to wholeness. Your time for total healing is now. Today you shall recover. Wholeness, healness, and peacefulness is in the mind. That is where all battles for life end and begin. This broadcast is the third broadcast of the series Women Must Change to Fight Sex Trafficking. It is important for everyone to realize you cannot fight a war against an ideology that you agree with. If you agree with sexual promiscuity, how can you stand against sex trafficking? If you believe in committing adultery behind closed doors, how can you fight against sex trafficking? If you believe in going to bed with your best girlfriend's husband, how can you fight against sex trafficking? Think about it. How can you go into a dance hall and tell men not to drink when you are guzzling down sherry in your basement every evening, swallowing your rage because you are a woman, being a second-class citizen with every sip? This is what women did in the early 1920s. They marched down the street protesting against men purchasing liquor and drinking in dance halls. They wanted to prohibit the drinking of spirits. When the temperance movement finally finished hollering and screaming, Congress passed the 18th Amendment prohibiting intoxicating liquor in the United States. The 18th Amendment, when enacted January 16, 1919, banded the manufacture, transportation, and the sale of intoxicating liquors. Prohibition ended on December 5, 1933, with the ratification of the 21st Amendment. The 21st Amendment repealed the 18th Amendment to the United States Constitution, which had mandated a nationwide prohibition on alcohol. The three largest national protests made by women was the Prohibition Initiative, Suffrage and Mothers Against Drunk Drivers. The 19th Amendment guaranteed all women the right to vote. Achieving this milestone required a lengthy and difficult struggle. Victory took decades to achieve. The 19th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution prohibited each of the states and the federal government from denying any citizen the right to vote because of the citizen's sex. The right of citizens of the United States to vote shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of sex. This amendment brought in gender equality. 
So you see, it was and is possible for women to affect the outcome of history in a large way. But here is the point. How can you fight against a system of behaviors if you do not know how to fight? You will not win. You must know how to fight. During each of these movements, meetings were held, strategies were developed, and women were trained how to stand up to the crowds and how to stand up to their fathers, to their brothers, and the men in the street. This is why the military does not send a man into battle without training him. The man learns how to clean and assemble his weapons. The man is given proper shoes and clothing. He receives medical and dental before he begins training. He is tested after training. If he fails, he may be given an opportunity to improve, but that depends. Usually the military, if a man fails basic training, he is washed out. The military will not trust an untrained man with the lives of other men. When men go into battle, it is always life or death. If a man is not trained, the results usually surely be death or defeat. Can you stand up for yourself? That is the question. During World War II, many American fighting men were not sufficiently trained. And because of this, when they fought in North Africa over the Kasserine Pass, they suffered a defeat and 4,000 men were captured. Many of these men were taken to Italy and made to march through Rome to demonstrate their humiliation. It was not until Americans fought in Tunisia in May 1943 did they begin to win in Africa. They captured over a dozen German generals. Training is everything when you fight for your life. Actually, training is everything when you fight, period. One must be trained. Ask yourself. How upset are you about sex trafficking? What have you done about it? Have all you done is talk? So how committed are you to the women in your community? What are you willing to do to stop this practice? Are you willing to stand up to legislators to have them pass new sentencing laws to provide better schools to reduce poverty that is one of the causes of sex trafficking? What? make sexual sin such a big deal for discussion. Sex trafficking is a big deal because it can happen to anyone, to your child, your neighbor's child, to anyone's child. Although sexual behavior is considered a personal choice, akin to the decision of whether to buy a house or rent a, a condo, it can have and almost always has a deleterious consequence. Therefore, having sex outside of the marriage may be socially acceptable, but is it right for you? How does having sex outside of the marriage affect your decision making? Have you considered that sexual activity outside of the husband and wife relationship as a violation of yourself? Sit down and seriously think about the situation with respect to yourself. Leave out what someone else thinks about the subject. What do you truly think? Sex was designed to consummate the lifetime union between a man and a woman. Jesus said, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Sex is a gift to a husband and wife to make their relationship unique among all other relationships. When we use sexuality for entertainment or to satisfy lust, we cheapen the beauty of this powerful gift and defy the one who designed it. We also reap the consequences of our sin. Our sexual disobedience has produced a world staggering under the weight of disease, abortion, perversion, child molestation, addiction, and sexual exploitation. God created boundaries for our good so that we would enjoy his gift as it was designed to be enjoyed. Then when lust was conceived, it gives birth to sin. And when sin is accomplished, it brings forth death. So I put it to you again. How can you fight an ideology or a way of life if you do not know how to fight and if you do not know how to identify and define the enemy? And how can you fight if you do not have courage? So with respect to sex trafficking, who is the enemy? Who should be targeted for your rage? Who should be seen as the interloper? 
In fact, how do you feel about sex traffickers? What do you think should happen to them? What should be the punishment? Should they be given a few years in prison or should they be executed? Because surely someone who forces another person to have sex with thousands and thousands of men cannot be human. These traffickers have no empathy for their victim, so why should society have any empathy for them when it comes to their punishment? What is their earthly value after they are caught? Are we to believe they can or will be rehabilitated in prison? Are they going to find God? Do you really think a man or woman who forces a nine-year-old child into sexual slavery deserves rehabilitation? Looks like before the fight begins, women need to answer a few questions of themselves, which brings me to the book series, Women of Courage. Because no matter what battle we fight, we must have courage. Winston Churchill said in 1940, success is not final, failure is not fatal. It is courage to continue that counts. Please watch the next video. I am going to pause for a second to take a short break while you listen to information regarding willpower and encouragement. It is all a matter of learning new behaviors. And please remember, it is easier to build strong minds than to repair injured people. What I said is a modification of a quote by Frederick Douglass. He said, it is easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. Now for my break. Dear listeners, help us save the life. Stop breast cancer from taking lives. Will you assist us in putting the booklet Black Women and Breast Cancer in the Hands of a Million People? Please go to the website www.touchedbythelight.us and download the booklet Black Women and Breast Cancer. Then email this booklet to five friends, asking them to email the booklet to five of their friends. We are trying to reach a million women with this information to save lives. The death of one woman to breast cancer from our community is one woman too many. We thank you for your support. Oftentimes, fear is defined as fantasized experiences appearing real. We all fear something. It could be doing what's never been done or being scared for no just cause. These fears hold us down and create a fantasized, albeit unreal, experience. If you must move ahead in life, you must stand up to your fear. If you must be successful, you must pull through the unreal experiences that fear has created in you. And trust me, you need a good dose of courage to do exactly that. With courage, there's no stopping you. How can you summon the courage to face your fears? As a woman, you're amazing and you have great capabilities. Do not let anyone tell you otherwise. How then can you maximize these great capabilities? As you'll find out in the series, Women of Courage, the women we wrote about succeeded against all odds simply by standing up for themselves. Just like them, you can make your life count too. You can find the series Women of Courage at www.touchedbythelight.us. Every year, thousands of books are written on how to achieve our dreams, how to live a happier life, or make a lot of money. Yet, the number of people living unhappy lives keeps going up. People living a life of uncertainty, a life of despair. What could be the problem? Were the books lying about these promises, or were people not practicing what they read? You see, the truth is that most times we know exactly what we want out of life, and we often know how to get there. So what is the missing link? It's the courage to take that first step, to go from where we are right now to the life of freedom and fulfillment we so much desire. We must first leave our comfort zone, and it takes courage to make that move. And that is exactly where all those books failed, they tell you what you should do, but can't get you to take that first step. A wise man once said, without courage, you can't leave your comfort zone. If you don't leave your comfort zone, 
you can't grow. If you can't grow, you can't be your best. And if you can't be your best, you can't be happy. You can find the series Women of Courage at www.touchedbythelight.us. We live in a society that has created an impression that a woman is limited in what she can do. The society lets you see yourself as a weaker human who should not aspire to greater things. Most of us grew up with that mentality and thus turned out to be unambitious. Good news is there are a lot of women out there just like you who have turned their lives around dramatically. Women like Mother Teresa, Lucy Burns, and Rosa Parks. There's one underlying factor common to all these women, courage. They were courageous in the face of societal intimidation. They were courageous enough to move against societal norms that were unacceptable to them. They were courageous when it mattered, most thus writing their standards in the sands of time. Purchase the Women of Courage series today at http colon slash slash touchedbythelight.us or mail a check to P.O. Box 7267, Ann Arbor, Michigan 48107. Are you sick and tired of being you? Do you want another life, a second chance? Then it's time to change. It's time for you to find out who you are. It's time for you to stand up for yourself. It's time for you to think for yourself. It's time to rid your mind of poisonous beliefs like women should only be seen and not heard. It's time for you to learn how other women accomplished their goals. For more information regarding Women of Courage and to be among the countless women learning to manage the challenges, limitations, and rejections of life, go to https colon slash slash touchedbythelight.us. We live in a society that has created an impression that a woman is limited in what she can do. The society lets you see yourself as a weaker human who should not aspire to greater things. Most of us grew up with that mentality and thus turned out to be unambitious. Good news is there are lots of women out there just like you who have turned their lives around dramatically. There's one underlying factor common to all these women. Courage. They were courageous in the face of societal intimidation. They were courageous enough to move against societal norms that were unacceptable to them. They were courageous when it mattered most, thus writing their names in the sands of time. Reading this series, Women of Courage, is a good place to learn about the significant role courage plays in achieving great things in life. You can find the series, Women of Courage, at www.touchedbythelight.us. If you have reached a point where you are stuck, having a sense of tiredness, coming from seeing all of your dreams and visions of success get obscured with the lack of experience, guidance, and knowledge necessary for success, learning from Women of Courage may be the most important thing you've read this year. Living a passionate life in a hectic and busy 21st century is getting increasingly harder. Women of Courage series will provide you with all the inspiration, courage, and role model you need to get inspired and take your life in your hands and start living as bravely, as passionate as you deserve. Most aspiring individuals end up missing a huge amount of opportunities due to the lack of training and tools that would allow you to overcome psychological barriers, limiting beliefs, fears, and lack of creativity that you could potentially face during your journey as a successful woman. This lack of proper guidance manifests itself in lowered performance and productivity and failure to unleash your full potential and show the world what you can truly do. 
if you lack the attitude and psychology, proper resources, or vision to make your dreams a reality, combined with dissatisfaction with the execution of your plans, but you remain firmly dedicated to making your ambitions a reality, you will certainly derive the most benefit from the incredible Woman of Courage series. If you are serious about taking your life to a whole new level and enjoying the privileges of creativity, fearlessness, and success that all the brave women who have changed the world are equipped with, you are in the right place. Don't leave your future to chance. Get a new sense of strength, inspiration, and courage with Women of Courage series. You'll be so glad you did, guaranteed. Achieve what you're after. I am going to pause for a second to take a short break while you listen to information regarding willpower and encouragement. It is all a matter of learning new behaviors. And please remember, it is easier to build strong minds than to repair injured people. What I said is a modification of a quote by Frederick Douglass. He said, it is easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. Now for my break. Reverend Dennis Graham, and we've got an interesting program going on here. We're uh, training returning citizens and low income how to do industrial aerospace welding. And we're looking for more people to come in and we're looking for investors, anybody that wants to sponsor. And we're offering this to the low income and the returning citizens for free so that they can get a, a, a step up in life and get an actual good career with a sustainable position in a sustainable job. This announcement is to say that the Women of Courage show will be participating in the author's pop-up shop at the American Legion Hall 346 at 31775 Grand River Avenue, Farmington, Michigan. The author's pop-up shop at the American Legion Hall 346 is being held Saturday, February 9, 2019 from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m in Farmington, Michigan. The event again is being held at 31775 Grand River in Farmington, Michigan. This pop-up shop is intended to support the work of Metro Detroit authors and to engage our community. This event will give Metro Detroit authors a chance to display their talent, network, and meet the community and other authors. Come meet and greet and buy books and get them signed from a diverse group of Metro Detroit authors. Choose from nonfiction, romance, self-help, urban fiction, Christian fiction, empowerment, hip-hop, love stories, coming of age, and children's books. The event is organized by an Abigail Rose. Abigail spelled A-B-I-E-G-A-I-L. She is the one that has made the arrangements for the pop-up shop. You can go to her Facebook page to obtain tickets. She is also holding an ex business expo event on the same day at the same time. Again, the Women of Courage show will be attending the author's pop-up shop at the American Legion on Saturday, February 9th, 2019. We will see you there. Menzi Salon and Spa is now offering $25 flat irons Tuesdays and $55 relaxer, touch-up, trim, style included on Wednesdays. Full body massage for $29. Barbara's on duty. Menzi Salon and Spa is a full service spa and salon. Located at 22884 Ryan at Nine Mile Road in Warren, Michigan. Call 586-510-4545. Why are only a few women in history books? Why are women left out of leadership positions? Why are 21st century women struggling with the same issues that 20th century women fought against? 
The series Women of Courage gives answers to these questions. Millions of women all over the world are living in fear, unhappy, and unfulfilled, wishing they could do more with their lives. If you are one of these women, fearful and unhappy, take the bold step and purchase the series Women of Courage. Read and learn how other women met these challenges and succeed in living fulfilling lives. Read the series Women of Courage and learn how you can change your life forever. Women of Courage is an inspirational book that seeks to tell the stories of strong women who have persevered, even when those threatened by a woman's strength have stood in the way. It's a book for all women, a book to help more of us stand up and say, it's about time. It's a book for you. Get your copy from touchedbythelight.us. We live in a society that has created an impression that a woman is limited in what she can do. The society lets you see yourself as a weaker human who should not aspire to greater things. Most of us grew up with that mentality and thus turned out to be unambitious. Good news is there are a lot of women out there just like you who have turned their lives around dramatically. Women like Mother Teresa, Lucy Burns, and Rosa Parks. There's one underlying factor common to all these women, courage. They were courageous in the face of societal intimidation. They were courageous enough to move against societal norms that were unacceptable to them. They were courageous when it mattered, most thus writing their standards in the sands of time. Purchase the Women of Courage series today at http colon slash slash touchedbythelight.us or mail a check to P.O. Box 7267 Ann Arbor, Michigan 48107. The series Women of Courage shares a story about women who rose above various odds to hit remarkable success. It shines a light about certain gray areas that help women become all that they can be. This series is in three parts. The series consists of three books, Women of Courage Part 1, Women of Courage Part 2, and How to Become a Woman of Courage Workbook. The cost of the series is $72.85. Although you can purchase one book at a time if you desire. While reading these books, you will be rubbing minds with some of the leading forces who have changed the faces of women all around the world. You will learn why Mark Twain quoted the most important days in your life are the day you are born and the day you find out why. This is true. His quote, cuts across color and other markers that differentiate us as humans. It touches the core of each soul and birth, new experiences that help women to take on the world. The Women of Courage series will help you achieve this by one, helping women boost their self-esteem and self-confidence. Two, Helping women to develop their inner strength. Three, empowering women to believe in themselves and learn how to achieve their goals. Four, showing women how to overcome stress and anxiety. And finally, putting the verse back into your life and so much more. Life is built on how much we give to those around us and how much we give to ourselves. Fighting sex trafficking is an opportunity to set priorities to the things that really matter. It is not just about the next paycheck or raising your kids. This is about setting goals of birthing the right gym in the heart of a sister. Many women would benefit from your effort that aligns with the essence of Women of Courage series. Think about women counting on your support. Here's a word from the author of Women of Courage. 
Hello, my name is Gloria Lee. I am the author of Women of Courage. I think it is extremely important that you know why I wrote the book Women of Courage. If I do a good job at writing this essay, it should spur other women to take up the cause of recording and publicizing the history of women for future generations. Who and what we are is important. What we think, why we love, and work is just as important to the well-being of the person as breathing. There is no reason why women should go back to drinking sherry in the basement to swallow their rage and having abortions in back alleys. There is no reason why a 13-year-old girl from Nigeria should be married off to a 40-year-old man against her will or an Indian woman being buried alive by her mother for refusing a marriage proposal. Nor should you young girls in the United States be forced to marry their uncles. I wrote Women of Courage because I felt women were missing from history and because women were missing from history those situations that affected their lives were unknown to them. No one was discussing how men turned women into prostitutes. No one was talking about women being murdered in convenience stores. And no one was talking about women being murdered in gas stations while working. These are vulgar subjects, but knowledge saves lives. So why are these subjects not being discussed in our public schools? It is stupid for this information to be withheld from people until they go to college. Once one begins to research the history of women from newspaper articles, one can see that women were losing their lives based on what they did not know. I will repeat it. Women are losing their lives based on what they do not know. I was disturbed because courage was never attributed to women. Why aren't single women called courageous when they work late at night alone in convenience stores so they can support their children. Why a woman isn't called courageous when she gets up every morning at 4 a.m. and ride the bus with her children to the babysitter then take a bus to work? Where are the textbooks that describe what, are, what is actually occurring in our country? Why don't men tell the truth about what is happening to women? Why doesn't someone write about the lies being told by the state and how the state manipulates the lives of women? Why so many lies? What are the advantages of not telling the truth? Why isn't something being said about the increase in prostitution? Why aren't women being told about the power they possess? Why isn't there more discussion of women being shortchanged in salary for the work that they perform? Who is Lily Ledbetter? I bet you that Lily Ledbetter is not mentioned in one textbook taught to the children in this country. Why isn't the self-worth of girls just as important as the self-worth of boys? Peel back the pages of a history book and read how women are described, if at all. Women were teachers and nurses and models. Oh yes, some were nuns. They were nice and smiley face, and that was all. The women had no dimension, no breath to their lives. Oh, the Queen of England was lauded, as were Queen Isabella of Spain and Catherine the Great of Russia. Yet, there was a huge block of women missing from history. Where were the Eskimos, the Cuban, the Negro women? What did they have to say during their lifetime? Apparently nothing, because their thoughts and words are missing from history books. They were born, they lived, and they died. Yet tons of paper has been used to describe men. If you walk up and down the aisles of a library, compare the words written about men by men to words written about women by men. There is no comparison, and this is a lack of information, is not a misstep nor an accident. It is a deliberate act to drive women into oblivion. Women are not important. What women think and what women feel or what women believe is not important unless their beliefs align 
themselves with the church. I'll say it again. What women think, what women feel, or what women believe is not important unless they believe what the church tells them to believe. The church says, let's march against abortion clinics. We must keep people, women in line. Do not think Christians are not bullies or that they do not hate, especially those who refuse to do self-examinations. You must agree with their interpretation of the Bible. In the East, honor killings keep women in line. In the West, it is the machines that advocate for marching on the abortion clinics. We must keep women fearful and obedient. I began collecting information on the achievement of women in 1999, and I began writing my book in 2004. The desirable women in our country were Betty Davis and Marilyn Monroe. Nothing was ever said or written about women facing a divorce or women working in the factory or cleaning houses. Their lives were not interesting. I thought the absence of their stories from our history was wrong. I wanted my books to correct this omission. One thing I did realize is that if the history of women was to be written, that writ history would have to be written by a woman. Men were not interested in the exaltation of women, merely their compliance as sex objects. My writing would have to lead women to the fact men want to be in control and men want to tell everyone else what to do. I would have to show that men will do anything and everything to maintain this control, including lying and committing murder, and no man is excluded from this purpose. There is not one husband in the world that does not want to come home to compliance and repetition. Life is much simpler for men when women do as they are told. Think of all the generals in our military who wish women would just go away so they do not have to deal with the rapes in their ranks. I told myself the books were to be effective. The books had to include subjects that women did not want to talk about. The subjects of sex, rape, and poverty would have to be broached. Poverty has caused thousands of women to marry the first man walking to raise their status. Thus, the numerous marriages on military base and in steel towns. Men would have to be identified as a common enemy. Somehow my writing would have to say something that would unify women and cause women to act for one another. Women like blacks were, have been deliberately divided. I knew I would have to explain why and how men benefit from the subjugation of women and why we as women would have to fight and fight until this system of control is destroyed lest our daughters fall victims to this system. I asked myself, were there any magical words I could write to get women all walking in the same direction? Could I get mothers to see the only question they face is, what must I do for my daughter to keep her from living a dismal life, a life requiring a daily dose of alcohol or drugs? How could I get women to see that their sovereignty was linked to the ability to work to earn a living? Freedom is indeed linked to the earning of money. How could I get them to fight for the right to work? What magical words could I use to create fire in their breast and determination in their stride? Why could there not be magical words in our lives? I was born May 7th, 1945 in the state of Michigan. I was born into a family with six siblings. There was nothing remarkable about my family except my mother was a force. She had opinions and she voiced these opinions. She was not oppressive. I could argue my position. Our greatest battle was over cooking and being a lady. I hated cooking and I did not want to be a lady. I just wanted to be me. I did not want to wash dishes 
and I did not want to wear high heel shoes. What I wanted to do was to earn money. Even as a child, I did not like not being able to buy things that I wanted. Not having money was the problem. So, the issue in my life became how to get money. Selling my body was not an option. My mother was virulently opposed to this. She said I was not to be owned by anyone. My mother tried me out at singing, playing the piano, and baton twirling. Finally, she settled on wheezing. I read and read and read. Reading was my way out. Reading would lead me to the money, and the money would lead me to self-determination. Most of what my mother taught me stuck. Her words fashioned my behavior. I will always remember what my mother said to me. Let no man take your life for easy. If you have to die, make certain that you take it with you. She preached fighting. If you do not like something, stand up. If you get knocked down, keep fighting until you can stand back up. My life was mine to live. Marriage was fine, but my husband could not tell me what to do. As I was developing, I never thought I would be a member of the generation of women who would burn their bras in the 1960s, who would protest the Vietnam War and advocate for women's rights. I was alive when the Violence Against Women's Act was established in 1994. I was alive when the first man was prosecuted under this act. Do you know his name? I remember when I marched in Mississippi in 1963 against discrimination while I wore a military uniform. That one act of defiance could have destroyed my life because I could have been dishonorably discharged. But I never considered the consequences. A group of black soldiers stationed at Keesler Air Force Base thought we should participate in the demonstrations taking place in Mississippi. How could we stand by and allow others to fight for us? All soldiers on the base were told by the base commander that we were restricted to base. There would be no liberty as long as there were demonstrations in the area. We disobeyed this order and left the base in cabs to protest. That was the first time I was arrested and handcuffed. We weren't in jail long because we were in uniform. After that affair, I joined the effort to integrate old Mississippi University. We felt if we could fight for the country, we should be able to participate in anything in the country, including going to universities. If there was a protest in Mississippi, I was there. Any system that treated people badly, I was against. Any system that treated people fairly, I was for. People spent time discussing what it meant to be a good citizen. It was during my protest period that I learned about the history of unions in this country. While reading the history of unions, I learned about the ugliness of child labor and how coal miners were betrayed by their state government and the number of children sexually abused in the workforce. People do not realize how important the history of unions is to this country. With respect to women, unions have dealt with violence against women in the workplace, the need for equal pay for women, women and family needs. The union have given women a voice in our economy. I remember John Denver. He captured the love and passion in our country. People in crowds hugged and wept together during rallies. Mr. Denver's music described these emotions. I cannot think of Mr. John Denver without pain. I never met him, but I knew he had a great love for his fellow man. The music created during the last 50 years was our music. It was a music that described our despair and our hopes and our dreams and our pain. The men and women who sang and composed music suffered with us. These people were not caricatures. They were not just performing for the money. Their hearts were in their music. 
there was great passion. I was reminded of this when I watched the When We Were Young on MSNBC describing Muhammad Ali's rumble in the jungle. James Brown flew to Africa to perform for the crowds. How great was that? How amazing was that? I had forgotten how much fun we had together. James Brown was a performer, but he was a man of great passion. His passion was for humanity, which was expressed in his music. James Brown gave his all when he performed. I remember Billy Crystal. He and Whoopi Goldberg gave several fundraisers to help the homeless. I was not a great fan of Billy Crystal, but my opinion of him changed after his activism. He knew what he was doing would impact people's lives. Americans believed in Billy Crystal. He wanted to transform human existence. Some people thought, why should he be concerned with homelessness? He had money. Why not enjoy his celebrity and his money and be done with it? What value were the homeless? They were losers. It was their failure they ended up on the street. If they had been more like us, they would not have a home and they would not be without a career. The homeless would never repair their lives, so why waste money on them? They would die on the street. Why did they matter? They stopped contributing to our country when they found themselves homeless. Yet there was an unspoken emotion running through the country. We were all working for one another. Were we not our brother's keeper? People did act for one another. Homelessness in America was an abomination and Billy Crystal and Whoopi Goldberg said we had to do something about it. The problem of the homelessness was a family issue, not a governmental issue. America responded. There was no me, just us. We were the family. From their efforts, Billy Crystal and Whoopi Goldberg created a new future for people. Living for one another is an important condition of a relationship. Is this relationship that causes us to value ourselves? If we do not think homelessness is important in this country, read the following headlines. Three million dollar bail set for brothers charged with torture murder of a homeless man. This is May 2016. Brothers arraigned for killing torture of a homeless man held for three million dollar bail. Family members say the attack was in retaliation after the victim tried to stop the suspects from bullying other homeless people. June 21, 2016, a San Diego high school cheerleader charged in the fatal be beating of a homeless man. Allegedly, two brothers, Austin, 20, and Preston, age 19, went into a homeless area and began shooting a homeless man with a paintball gun. Another homeless man, age 50, George Lowry, stopped the assault. Not liking Mr. Lowry's interference, the brothers returned the next day, which is April the 24th, 2016, and beat and tortured George Lowry. His wife found him tied up and unconscious face down in a field near the camp. He died April 28, 2016, five days later. George Lowry had a stroke and two brain hemorrhages as a result of the beating. He was kicked and punched in the head. The Lowrys had been married more than 25 years. His daughter said his whole life revolved around his wife Penny working and doing any handiwork so he could provide for him and his wife and family. Although he did not have much, he was always giving. Anyone who came across him loved his personality and he always talked to people. Anyone he saw that needed help or just needed a smile, he was there lifting their spirits. This is a man the two brothers killed. If someone was in need, he would do whatever he could to do with help no matter how hard the task. 
If he came across a good fortune, he shared it. His daughters loved her father. She said that he was not a throwaway just because he was homeless. Let us wait and see what happens when the people of California think about the life of George Lowry. I believe no American should be subject to homelessness. The high school cheerleader, Haley, age 18, pleaded not guilty Monday to two felony counts of being an accessory after the fact. One of the brothers was her boyfriend. She was probably arrested because the prosecutor believes she knows exactly what happened and his office is going to compel her to talk. This was the behavior Billy Crystal and Whoopi Goldberg were trying to prevent. These people still have value. Mr. George Lowry's behavior contradicts the opinion people have of the homeless. He was a father and he was a friend. He lost his life being a friend. He did not hesitate to help when his friend was being hit with paintballs. He knew it was humiliating. He had not lost his humanity. He knew the brothers were there to have fun and to ridicule the homeless. Humiliating the homeless was a sport. Why didn't the brothers take the paintball gun and shoot men in their area who owned homes? The answer is simple. The homeowners would have called the police. Their complaints would have been immediately answered. Whereas the homeless, who cares? America has now changed. I did not realize how much we had changed until recently. I never thought of betraying a woman or humiliating a woman in public to glorify myself or to further my ambition. I am shocked that I see this behavior today in women betraying women. I was watching the Joy Reid show and one her, of her guests was a woman. Everything out of this woman's mouth was blistering. You could see the meanness in her face. Finally, the woman made a, a statement that was untrue. She rapidly tried to overspeak Joy Reid so she could reinforce the false information she was espousing. When Joy Reid corrected her, the woman was smirking. The woman was satisfied with herself. She was proud of herself. She had pulled it off. She had steered the conversation to where she could inject her poison. She took the opportunity to use Joy Reid's invitation to be on the show to spread her propaganda. I sat and watched this woman with a smirk on her face and I said to myself, I wonder if that woman knows what she's doing to herself. She has sold herself for 30 pieces of silver. She is telling the world, I believe in winning and cheating is okay. Women in the 1960s were held to higher standards than that. We were neither buying nor selling ourselves. There were women in our movements that did not eat to go through college. I said to myself, she is just a flash in the pan no one is going to remember her. She and other women like her are going to be used, then cast aside. She is telling people I can be bought and sold. All I want to know is, do you have the money to pay me? And I will do or say anything to help you win an election. This woman has no idea of character or integrity that actually matters even to her employers. Her services were purchased because she did not have character or integrity. You do not hear from this woman now. The reason why this behavior shocked me is that I had not watched television in 10 years. Sometimes I turned the television on for noise as I was writing, but I did not concentrate on the news stories. Just recently, I learned that women were setting up fake abortion clinics across the country to stop women from getting abortions. There were women in clinics posing as nurses and qualified counselors. I asked myself, what have we done to ourselves? The women who march for suffrage and who march for civil rights did not behave this way. Their purpose was to improve the lives of women, not to promote oneself for money. When did women stop caring for one another? 
When did women stop working for one another? Women were taking on police departments, prosecutors for their disinterest in domestic violence. This woman was so intent on proving herself that she was not thinking. She knows she's only valuable if she can further her employer's agenda. So she adopted the technique of being the oppressor. This woman did not look to other women to emulate. She chose to follow in the footsteps of men. This is like the child on the playground who sees the bully getting respect so he decides to emulate the bully. Bullies get respect just like the black boy living in poverty. He sees a dope dealer living large so why not become a dope dealer and I can live large. Psychiatrists like Merlu, who's the author of Rape of the Mind, can probably explain this behavior and the behavior of other women just like the one that was on Joy's show. Men are successful. Men have ruled the world for over 2,000 years, so why not do as they do? I believe the women emulating men do so because they do not believe in the power of women and they do not think women are successful even women who sing and act in our nation. Let what I'm saying sink in. We now have educated women in our country who believe in order to succeed, they need to emulate men. There are no women equal in stature to men. What have we done to ourselves? Something must be done by women to constantly tell girls and women who they are, the power they possess, and what they can achieve in life. Women do not have to follow in the footsteps of men to be successful. All we have to do is wrestle the power from their hands. The women discussed in Women of Courage are women who are doing just that. They are wrestling the power from the hands of men. Thank you for listening to Women of Courage and have a great day.